When I was younger, I went to Blackpool Beach. Only it looked a bit more like that. And on the seashore, I saw what looked like a bit of shampoo, so naturally, like anyone would, I went and shoved my head on it. But actually, what these froth was, was lots of little bubbles all gathered together in a big long line. And that's what my reach project's gonna be about today. So the first thing I was thinking about when I was researching this topic was why is it that bubbles pop so easily? And the thing you need to understand first is what the structure of a bubble is like. So a bubble, essentially, is a soap sandwich. So you've got two layers of soap um, and in between a layer of water. And what happens when a bubble is popping is the heat, usually from the sun or from the room, evaporates the water and as soon as the two layers of soap collide, the bubble pops. So I was thinking, this must mean that if you can prevent the water from evaporating, then the bubble won't pop. Which means you can touch with something as sharp as a, as a pin and the bubble won't pop. So I'm going to be doing an experiment today to test this out. So I'm going to be needing a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come and help me? Before I do this, I need to ask for health and safety. Is anyone allergic to fun? <laughs> <laughs> so in this cup now, I've got a pin, which is sharp enough to pop any bubble, unless it's wet. So I'm going to blow a bubble now, and I'm going to try and catch it on the wand. And Mr. Ward is going to put the pin against the bubble and see if it doesn't pop. I'm going to just catch one of these, and I'll put them in against the bubble. It doesn't always work, evidently. <laughs> Alright, I'll get a strong one. This one looks alright. And no matter how many times he touches it, until the, the pin dries, the bubble won't pop. This is because the water isn't evaporating, because the pin is wet. Thank you very much. <laughs> when you're in the bath and you've got uh, lots of bubbles going, these bubbles that are in your bath don't pop. This is because the room um, is, is, uh, is moist and warm, which are the correct conditions for bubbles. So the next thing I was thinking about that's quite obvious about bubbles is that they're, they're round. And the reason for this is because there's something called a minimal surface structure, similar to balloons. And basically this um, big long scientific word means that they have a small surface area as possible. This means that inside a bubble, you've got the air particles going around and they're pushing out at the same pressure all the way around. This is why it automatically goes into a round shape rather than a square or a triangle. But with all laws of science, there's always a way to break them. So today I'm going to be trying to make a bubble into a square shape, so I'll be needing another volunteer please. Would you like to come and help me with some <laughs> <laughs> So, inside here we have bubble mixture, which is basically just washing up liquid and warm water. So Mr. Chlorin now is going to pull out this structure and you'll see an amazing spectacular. And as you can see, the bubble is now in a square shape. pressure which makes it into a square shape because although it's not round it's the smallest surface area that this bubble can get in this situation. So the next thing I'm going to be showing you, you'll all recognise this, is bubble wrap. Now I've got some very nice facts about bubble wrap for you all. <laughs> bubble wrap was first invented in 1957 and originally it was being marketed as a wallpaper. The manufacturers initially made it by pushing two shower curtains together and bubbles formed in between the two shower curtains and they thought this would make a great 3D wallpaper but it turned out this didn't catch on and two years later it was turned into packaging and more recently it's used for certain kinds of therapy to, re to reduce stress. <laughs> <laughs> 400,000 kilometres of bubble wrap are made each year and to all into perspective that's enough to wrap around the earth ten times. So if on your, on your desk you'll find a little pot of bubbles, if you could all blow some for me. They're quite hard to open, if you imagine you open it like a ketchup bottle. And what you'll notice if you're looking around the room, all these bubbles have a slight colour to them. And I'm going to be telling you about why is it that... Now the reason that some bubbles have colour is because 
because it's all due to the light and the size of the sandwich. So as you can see is the one that's been drawn up here. The soap sandwich is big, so you've got a lot of water in between each of the layers. This is because, <coughs> if you look, the light waves bounce off each of the layers and they interfere with each other because the size of the sandwich is equal to the, the wavelength, which means you form colour. But when the soap sandwich is a lot smaller, like this one, um, the light waves don't interfere with each other as a bounce off, so you get no colour, which is quite sad. <laughs> so I'm going to be talking about something a bit more serious now, and it's about a recent breakthrough in June of this year that could, um, that is a, a recent breakthrough into curing cancer. This is called bubble technology. And what some scientists have produced are something called micro bubbles. So what you're blowing now on a much smaller scale. So these micro bubbles, they're coated in a cancer drug. And then this is coated in iron oxide. And as you might know from your science lessons, iron oxide is magnetic. So when these micro bubbles are injected into the bloodstream and a magnet is put against the tumour, all these micro bubbles go straight to the tumour. And this is such a big breakthrough because with chemotherapy, it's often that um, the drug doesn't go to where you want it to go. The drug doesn't penetrate enough into the tumour and this can lead to um, the cancer cells coming back and producing into another ca cancer um, tumour. And this is very important that uh, within two years it's estimated that this new microbubble treatment could be rolled out on the NHS. Yeah. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope that you've learned that bubbles aren't all fun and games. <laughs>